the epistle of Blessed Paul, the Apostle to the Corinthians. Brethren, I give thanks to my God always for you, for the grace of God that is given you in Jesus Christ, that in all things you are made rich in Him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that nothing is wanting to you in any grace, waiting for the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who also will confirm you unto the end of without crime, in the day of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. A continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time Jesus, entering into a ship, passed over the water and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him one sick of the palsy, lying in a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the man sick of the palsy, Be of good heart, son, thy sins are forgiven thee. And behold, some of the scribes said within themselves, He blasphemeth. And Jesus, seeing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say, Thy sins are forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? But you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the man sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy house. And he arose and went into his house. And the multitude, seeing it, feared and glorified God, who had given such power to men. Thus are the words of the Holy Gospel.
Here are two fun stories from Thursday and Friday of this week of being among faith-born people, not faithless. I took a couple vacation days during the week because I was invited to lead about 2,000 people in prayer at the start of Thursday's program of a convention entitled Faith and Freedom Alliance. And then gave a short talk and on Thursday, I found myself in the green room. That wasn't green, it was more like Smith's. You know, green room is just another term that means to get ready to go out there in the room. When I walked in, I was ushered over to sat next to none other than the great Leo Terrell, the incredible black civil rights attorney who frequently appears on Fox. I was stunned. I didn't know. It is awesome. We ended up having a lively conversation in the middle of it. He came up with the idea to call my mother. So I handed in my cell phone. She recognized who it was immediately. We watched him. She recognized, well, listen, you've seen him. He's a pretty lively guy. She recognized who it was immediately. And then he had this lively conversation with her. That's a fun gift a son can give to his mother. Mr. Trell was a completely humble man. He was a speaker that in line right after me. And he spoke to the guy gathered crowd about right to life. And he brought down the house. And he said that this November, for the first time in his life, he was going to vote for a Republican. What does that tell us? That a black civil rights attorney who fought his whole life for the welfare of the black community tells everyone he's voting for Trump. What does that tell us? The family have heard me say it many times that Planned Parenthood is the most racist organization in the world, founded by a racist woman to wipe out black people. It was awesome to hear Leo Terrell say the same thing. Later that evening, Vice President Sven Pence spoke to us vigorously about life issues brought down the house again. That's the first one story, my, me and my new bud, Leo Terrell. <laughs> from Friday comes the second fun story. That day we heard from four U.S. Senators and the Governor of Georgia and the Judge Janine, Janine Pierre, and Nikki Haley, teacher and governor of South Carolina, who had become for a while ambassador to the U.N. All pro-life. Earlier in the middle of the day, Judge Shaleen, a Catholic, autographed a new, new book for my parents, specifically telling me that she put an X and an O there for them. Again, another great gift a son can give his parents. And then at its conclusion, I had to go back up on stage for a boatload of photo ops. And while I was there on the stage in the midst of all this picture taking, Judge Janine Hero, who had already had left, came back on stage to meet me along with Lynn Wood, who was Nick Sandman's attorney, you remember him, that Covington school boy. And dear family, it's amazing as all that was, my new friends, it's amazing as it was, those gifts I was able to give my parents are nothing compared to the greatest gift I can give them by serving God as his priest, his minister of grace. There's a plug there for anybody who's considering it. There's no greater gift I can give my parents. Or you, or even Judge Janine, which is why right there on the convention stage, in front of everybody, I lifted my hands like Moses and prayed a blessing over her, and laid my hands upon Judge Janine's head, as Jesus laid his hands upon his children. No greater gift I can give than being a minister of grace. I say all this, dropping names, it wasn't just dropping names. The whole conference was about faith and our freedom to practice our faith. And virtually every single speaker forthrightly proclaimed the right to life. It's very handy for us because this is our pro life month. And what's interesting about all that that I just told you is that this is the first time in the, the 31 year history of this now two million member organization that a Catholic priest has led them in prayer and then gave a talk. 
Why is that? When bastions of right to life gather under one roof, when those members of our government of greatest influence gather under one roof, how is it possible that no Catholic clergy, except one lone priest from this obscure parish in Southwest Wisconsin, gets us, gets invited to lead them in prayer and often in meditation? Well, the prophet Isaiah in the Gospel of Jesus our Lord has something to say about that. The answer to the question. To, to paraphrase Isaiah late in October 2020, now inhabitants of the United States and people of Wisconsin, judge between me and my vineyard what more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done. When, why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? To paraphrase our Lord and bring it into October 2020, finally God sent His Son to us, thinking they will respect my Son. But when the tenants saw the Son, they said to one another, This is the end. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. It's exactly what the Jews did to our Lord. It's exactly what happened when we let our government take God out of the government schools in 1963. He threw out our Lord. It's exactly what happened when the Democrats moved God at the National Convention. It's exactly why we very much should be concerned about how Isaiah and the Gospel apply to us in our day in 2020. Jesus asked the Jews, what will the owner of the vineyard do to these tenants when he comes? And yeah, they were clueless then. The Jews answered him, he will put those wretched men to wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Interesting, isn't it, that the Jews knew exactly what should happen, what should happen to those bad, bad tenants that killed the son. Indeed, that's exactly what happened then to them. That the Jews themselves circa 70 AD when the Romans laid siege to Jerusalem and massacred at least 600,000, I've heard size 1.1 million, men, women, and children. How's that for a wretched death? For killing the son of the owner of the vineyard? It's, it's true facts, dear family. You should pay, everybody should pay attention to those true facts and realize the implications kicking Almighty God out of our government schools in 1963. Do you ever wonder why it is that Jesus did not intervene and stop the Roman slaughter of 600,000 Jews in 70 AD? While we were wondering about that, let us not forget that our Lord did not intervene and stop the overall death count of as many as 90 million in World War II, both soldiers and civilians. Can we really blame Jesus for not intervening in the human affairs of faithless people? The Jews knew, what are you going to do with those bad tenants that killed the son? They knew! We can't say they didn't know. Can we say we don't know what's going to happen to faithless people? So what level of faithlessness does our Lord see amongst our world, our country, our state today? Well, we know that the voice of Jesus has been handed down faithfully by His Catholic Church, and the constant, unchanged, and unchangeable teaching is that there is no greater evil, absolutely nothing, in the slaughter of innocents. And yet, so many fake Catholics say, well, but so-and-so does so many other good things. Often listening off a progressive, socialist, and Marxist agenda with its intrinsically evil socialist goals. It's a Pope Benedict, the 16th said, and this almost verbatim. A government big enough to give us everything we need is big enough to take from us everything we have, including our freedom. 
fact, in the middle of this 7.30 Mass this, this morning, some heretic put flyers on people's cars. This is it. Proclaiming the heresy, essentially, of the seedless garment that was first proposed by the disgraced Cardinal Bernadine. Ironic, isn't it? And it specifically proposes that a host of other non-intrinsic evils are of equal weight for the slaughter of 10,000 babies yesterday and every other single Saturday. And that specifically says it's got like little green checks under Trump, it has one, it has a whole bunch of green checks under Biden. It says Trump, watch this, it says Trump specifically seeks to overturn Roe v. Wade, and then it specifically says Biden does not. Well, I should be thanking them for producing this. You get that question answered correctly, and they did. Game over. Nothing else matters. If that doesn't matter, that is number one. Nothing even comes close. So thank you. I guess I have to thank you, the purveyors of these heresies, because you just did my job for me. We can only hope that the president continues to appoint Supreme Court justices who will reverse that abominable decision from hell. I could go on and on about the radical nature of this flyer. If you see, if it's one on your car when you walk there, just throw it away. But understand, dear family, in these critical, critical days, that it encompasses the same godless, faithless argument as saying, I mean, it, it's the same argument. Well, Hitler exterminated millions of Catholics and Jews, but I'm voting for him anyway because he did such good social justice things, like he fixed the economy, and he, like the fascist Mussolini, made the trains run on time. Well, fixing the economy and making the trains run on time are good things. Helping the poor and striving to alleviate poverty levels are a good thing. Yes, they are. But it should not be lost in us as we're pondering such things. The plain and simple fact that under the prior administration, the president doubled, over than doubled, the national debt from about $9 trillion to almost $20 trillion. And surprise, surprise, poverty increased. It is impossible to eliminate poverty with another government handout, another government program. You cannot eliminate hunger by giving people a fish to eat because they're going to get hungry again the next day. You only can eliminate hunger by teaching people how to fish so they can feed themselves. If you're this is not rocket science. You're going to hear the contrary arguments out there. Be prepared. This convention I attended was all about right to life and teaching people how to fish. And not, definitely not, about godless, faithless, toxic socialism. It will not go well for the person who stands before Jesus and says the price I was willing to pay for any Marxist proposition was 10,000 babies slaughtered every Saturday. Like the great Cardinal Lorenzo said, even a third grader can figure out that one, that a pro-abortion politician cannot receive Holy Communion. We know Joe Biden should not go and receive Holy Communion. What does that tell us? Would you vote for somebody who's not in the state, who, who shouldn't receive Holy Communion? The great Cardinal Burke said, Joe Biden is not, repeat, is not a Catholic in good standing. The great Cardinal Gerard Mueller said, it is better to vote for a good Protestant than a bad Catholic. He said, none of this is my opinion. It's actually the unchanged and changed truth. He did it down through the Catholic Church for 2,000 years. In a family for two days this week, I stood amongst a bunch of both Protestants and Catholics, and to a person, we all stood for the same thing right to life. And amen, I say to you, a well-formed Catholic conscience, not the conscience of a Catholic that can somehow differ in relativism. Like this Catholic can think this way, and this Catholic can think this way. No, no, no. All Catholics should be thinking Catholic of the unchanged, unchangeable truth. A well-formed Catholic conscience dictates the following conclusion. Right to life trumps every social justice cause out there. This has to be prayer. So let's continue to properly form our Catholic consciences because we really do have a duty to be the brightest light of Christ that we can be. To light up truth in the hearts of those whose consciences clearly are not so well formed. And it will cost us when we do because people will resent us. 
People we love may even hate us. They all unfriend us on Facebook. I hear that all the time. But give glory to God that they do resent us and they do hate us because as the real Jesus taught, blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you. We should, we should be thanking God when they insult us and they persecute us and utter every kind of evil against us because of Jesus. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. He promised. Be glad if they unfriend us. Listen, that's not the kind of friend you want anyway. Be glad if they unfriend us. Give thanks to God if they unfriend us. Let us strive to be just that blessed. Because that is the day that we produce good grapes in the vineyard of our Lord, like Isaiah talked about. That is the way our Lord God Almighty will not take away His vineyard from us and give it to somebody else who produce good fruit. If you let us be faithful and not faithless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.